Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare medieval pizza with pork jowl and fennel from Platinas de Onesta Voluptate et Valetudine, written in the 15th century. We start with ingredients. We need the flour, sourdough, cured pork jowl, olive oil and the fennel seeds. We need the flour with two pinches of salt, sourdough, olive oil and warm water. The dish we are preparing today is called pizza or fugacia in the vernacular edition of Platinas book and placenta in the Latin edition. These terms are interchangeable as confirmed in the 17th century by Vincenzo Tanara in L'economia del cittadino in villa. Tomatoes are clearly absent in the medieval recipes, but they don't seem to be very common even in the late 19th century pizze. For the Neapolitan cook Adolfo Giaquinto, pizza napoletana is similar to platina and Tanara's pizze, and is made with salt and oil, with or without anchovies kneaded into the dough or placed on the pizza. According to Pellegrino Artusi, instead, pizza is a sweet, following a very old tradition that has its roots in the Renaissance. And there is no mention of savory versions. We mince the pork jowl and add it to the dough with the fennel seeds. The term pizza is attested from the 10th century, thanks to a collection of notarial acts of the city of Gaeta, although there are no descriptions of what this early pizza should be. In the historical sources, starting from the 15th century recipe we are preparing today, pizza refers to very different types of preparation, from focacce to sweets, savory dishes, and layered cakes with little in common. As we can read in Bartolomeo Scappi's opera and Panuntos La Singolare Dottrina, both written in the 16th century. In the earliest recipes for pizza, we find all kinds of ingredients. Cured pork fatback is one of the most common. But we also find almonds, walnuts, meat, fruit and herbs. In the past, we prepared another medieval pizza with quails and cheese from Platinas Book. You find the link in the description below. If you prefer, you can use olive oil without pork jowl, which replaced the pork fatback recommended in the original recipe. Or you can use butter instead, as suggested by Platina. Whereas Tanara writes to melt the cured pork fatback and remove the solid bits, Platina specifies to slice it and knead it directly into the dough. Fennel seeds are very popular in the preparation of medieval and Renaissance bread, as are any seeds. Use the ones you prefer. This preparation can also be unleavened. According to Platina, there are versions with or without yeast. We used sourdough, but another possibility is to use fresh grape must, a common leavening agent from the antiquity to the end of the Renaissance. As we read, for example, in Catos de Agricultura, Geoponics and Vincenzo Tanaras, L'Economia del Cittadino in Villa. You find an example of bread leavened with must in the description below. We let the dough rise overnight, then we flatten it with our hands, let it rest for half an hour, and cook it in the oven for about 30 minutes. To learn more about pasta throughout history, read our new book, Early Italian Recipes, Cereals, Bread, Pasta and Pies which includes 114 recipes from the antiquity to the end of the Renaissance, an introduction to the history of cereals in Italy, and an explanation of the basic preparations and ingredients used in the recipes. 
This book is the second in the series Early Italian Recipes, the first being dedicated to vegetables, fruit, herbs and flowers in historical cooking. To know more about medieval cooking, check out our books Libro della Cucina Medieval Tuscan Recipes and the Registro in Coquine a Medieval Cookbook. To support our work, you can also buy us a beer and purchase our merchandise. All the links are in the description below, along with a list of all our books on historical cooking and the link to our Patreon page, where you can find the translations of primary sources and articles on historical food. This pizza was delicious, fragrant with cured pork jowl and fennel that blended perfectly to create an excellent combination of flavors. A great medieval dish, perfect to be eaten alone as a snack or to accompany a salad or a soup, such as open shoots, parsley salad or a radish soup. You find the links to the videos in the description below. If you are interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.